What's up guys, Nurse Blake here, and welcome to simplenursing.com. Before we start today's video, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our new study guides not on YouTube. Click the link right up here anytime during this video. All right, let's begin. Today we're wrapping up artificial pacemakers. This is not a huge topic on the NCLEX or nursing test. So what I'm gonna do is only cover the most important stuff that shows up on your exams first. So write this down. Most all pacemakers are given to treat symptomatic bradycardia. Now that is a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. Symptomatic meaning your patients are showing signs and symptoms of neurostatus changes, mainly related to low oxygen. Symptoms like dizziness or fainting called syncope, fatigue during activities, or even turning blue from lack of oxygen. And this bradycardia does not respond to medication to get that heart rate up, so we slap a pacemaker on them. We do get pacemakers for fast heart rate problems too, called tachyarrhythmias, but that it's not as common. Pacemakers, so who gets them? Now, symptomatic bradycardia is a big problem for patients who have an injured heart, where their natural pacemaker, the SA or AV node, are not pacing correctly, usually following a heart injury. So remember the acronym, ah! like you're having a crisis. A stands for AV blocks, all types, but most common for third degree, complete heart blocks. Your first H is for heart failure, the second H is for heart attack, and then the third H is for heart surgery. So now I'm gonna review the different types of pacemakers. When you're looking at an ECG or EKG, you'll see really thick, dark, ugly, unplucked, eyebrow-looking spikes. This is normal for pacemaker patients. Now, pacemakers are either external or internal. The external ones seen here are only temporary and most commonly used in emergency acute situations. Temporary pacemakers are outside the body and we have three types. Number one is transcutaneous pacing. This means pads are placed over the chest like stickers and the impulse goes through the skin. We usually see this in the ambulance or in the ER during CPR code situations and even ICU for third degree heart blocks. Number two, temporary epicardial pacing, where there's wires hooked up directly to the outside of the heart, keeping it pumping after open heart surgery. And number three is endocardial pacing. The leads are inside the heart in the endocardium used for severe third degree heart block. Which brings us to the next point, implanted permanent pacemakers. The most common pacemakers and most commonly tested too. These guys are surgically placed and inserted directly into the heart. They are the little robot versions of the natural pacemakers of the heart, like our SA and AV node, and we have three different types. Number one is a single chamber, one lead placed into the right side of the heart, most commonly used for AFib or A flutter. Second, we have the dual chamber, DDD, dual for two leads in the heart, one in the right atria and one in the ventricle used for AV block. Least common, is the biventricular chamber. Two or three wires that go down in the ventricles. Bi means two, like a bicycle. So biventricular, think two ventricle leads. Now, there are certain special features that can really trick out the pacemaker. Remember that show, Pimp My Ride? Well, welcome to Pimp My Pacemaker. <laughs> So demand only kicks in when the heart rate drops. So it's only used on demand, most commonly used for symptomatic bradycardia. And then we have fixed rate. These guys fire at a fixed rate constantly, like 70 beats per minute. In the most fancy ultra upgraded version, the ICD, implanted cardioverter defibrillator that can deliver an electric shock. So let's talk about pacemakers after they've been surgically implanted. Here are the top six most tested things for the NCLEX and even your nursing tests. So we're gonna use the three I's. So the first I, immobilize the arm. There is a huge risk of electrodisplacement, and this is huge for the NCLEX. You always wanna make sure you reposition the patient slowly and carefully. Never raise the arm above the head for about two weeks and don't lift any heavy objects after surgery. So the second I, infection. We wanna make sure we monitor infections. The normal signs of infection are like a red, warm, and inflamed incision site, but also no bathtubs, creams, or powders initially. All of this can irritate the new pacemaker. 
And the last I is for immediate post-op. We wanna make sure we inspect the heart rate and teach the patient to inspect their heart rate every day. So now let's talk about patient education and long-term maintenance. Yes, it's okay to swim with a pacemaker and okay to drive after two weeks to allow healing. Just don't try to swim and drive at the same time because that can lead to pretty bad outcomes. Teach the patient to keep that ID card on them at all times and this is a huge for the NCLEX. And also teach them to report any signs of shortness of breath, dizziness, light fatigue, passing out. This is a sign that the pacemaker is messing up. They need to report this to their doctor immediately. It could end in death if the pacemaker fails. Now what to avoid? Avoid the two C's and the four M's. C for contact sports and constrictive clothing like grandpa's skinny jeans and also the four M's. M for magnets since they can actually send patients into a different mode which can be very deadly. So big NCLEX tips are to stay away from the four M's. MRI, microwaves, metal detectors, and MP3 earphones and stereos. And now for another Blake take, a critical thinking question that loves to show up on the NCLEX. Can pacemaker patients use TENS, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation? So what do you think, yes or no? No, they cannot, the pacemaker will fail. Remember that, because it may show up on the NCLEX. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right guys, see you next time.